Hello everyone, and welcome to the 17th episode of Analyzing Evil. In this video, we'll be going over Captain Vidal from Pan's Labyrinth. A cold and brutal villain, Captain Vidal is likely close to the image many of us find popping into our heads when we think of an officer carrying out the will of an authoritarian master. We're going to go into detail about where exactly the creators were drawing inspiration for this character, and the components that molded Captain Vidal into the perfect dictatorial minion that he is. Before we get into the captain though, I'd like to talk about our sponsor for this video, NordVPN. NordVPN is a military-grade virtual private network with thousands of servers in over 60 countries that helps you protect your information from malicious entities that are out to steal that information, while also providing you with anonymity when browsing the internet. We all have a lot at stake when it comes to our personal information online, and I personally keep NordVPN on at all times for that extra peace of mind. You can even use the NordVPN app on your phone to protect yourself wherever you are. Aside from the security it provides, you can also use NordVPN to access movies and shows on streaming platforms that are only available in other countries. For example, I wanted to watch Birdman recently, but soon discovered that it's only available on Netflix in the UK. With the click of a button, I switched my network over to a server in the UK and was able to watch my movie without having to look for an alternative. This doesn't only apply to Netflix either, as you can find a ton of movies and shows you wouldn't normally have access to on all of your favorite streaming platforms. So don't wait, go to nordvpn.com vile to receive an incredible discount on a two-year plan, and get a month free when you use the promo code VIAL at checkout. NordVPN also has a 30-day money-back guarantee if you aren't satisfied, so you really don't have anything to lose by signing up. Start taking your internet security seriously by going to nordvpn.com slash VIAL and using the promo code VIAL at checkout. A big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Now, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's cover the small amount of background information we receive about Vidal. The only thing we have to go off of is mention of Vidal's father from a conversation with an officer in the scene towards the middle of the film at the dinner party. The man mentions that Vidal's father, General Vidal, left quite the impression on him, to which the captain responds that he was an excellent soldier. He mentions how the general's men told a story of a watch the captain's father had that he smashed at the moment of his death to tell his son exactly when he died, and to show him how a brave man dies. Though this is, as I said, a small amount of information, we're given a few things to go off of here. The fact that his father was also a military man indicates to us that rather than joining the military of his own volition, our captain was indoctrinated into this lifestyle from an early age. It's likely that his father's legacy as a respected general, as well as the way he died, impressed upon a young Vidal to live up to his father's reputation and carry on said legacy. He even remarks during a battle in the film to one of his men to not be afraid, as dying in battle according to Vidal is the only decent way to die. So while we aren't given an extensive look into Vidal's childhood, we can infer that the position Vidal currently occupies, and the hopes of rising in the ranks even further that he undoubtedly possesses, were inspired by his father. It's interesting to note that Francisco Franco also came from a military background, his family belonging to a centuries-long tradition of naval officers. Franco would also aspire to follow in his father's footsteps, and his father and family legacy were some of the driving factors in propelling Franco on his journey to becoming the man he became. Franco as well was said to have been a rather cold and distant person, ruthless and effective in his duties as well as fearless in battle, and an incredibly traditional and conservative man owing to the influence of not only his father but his deeply devout mother. The character of Captain Vidal draws heavily from Franco, and this relation will become much more apparent the more we progress through this video. However, it's not only Franco that Vidal represents, but the party he headed, Fet y de las Hons, and the ideas it represented. A quick fun fact for any history buffs out there. The name of this party is an abbreviation of perhaps the longest name for a political party ever to exist. Falange Española Tradicionalista y de las Juntas de Ofensiva Nacional Sindicalista. Or in English, the traditionalist Spanish phalanx and that of the councils of the National Syndicalist Offensive. The party came to represent a few notable ideals. Namely social conservatism, Spanish nationalism, national syndicalism, monarchism, and a strict adherence to Catholicism in all aspects of Spanish life. Labeled by some as fascist, and by others as ultra-conservative, phalangism, the core ideology of the party, is nonetheless a deeply authoritarian, religious, violent, and orderly ideology. In Spain, Fet y de los Hons sought to re-establish the Spanish Empire, and establish law and order within Spain based upon total dominion of the Catholic Church in the country, with only the state poised above it to provide guidance to the people. This is a general definition of what ideals Fet y de las Hons and Falangism embodied, and for the purposes of this video, it will suffice. However, it is an interesting subject, 
and I advise you to read more into the history of not only this ideology, but of Francoist Spain and the Spanish Civil War. To learn more about the life of Franco in particular, I'll link a documentary on his life that you can watch here on YouTube down in the description. As this video goes on, the connection between Vidal, Franco, and Falangism will become more apparent, so keep these things in mind. Now let's get back to Vidal and first take a look at his appearance and his capabilities. Described as a dandy by the old women working in the kitchen, Captain Vidal is indeed a very well-groomed individual. A tight, slicked back hairstyle, a seamless and spotless uniform, and a clean-shaven face, Vidal, in my mind, is best described as what someone might call a good soldier. There's a scene where we see him shining his own boots, a task he could have delegated to a lesser-ranked soldier in his regiment, but chooses to do so out of what I'm sure is a sense of duty that he must follow, as all good soldiers must. It's a given that he should order the men under his command to perform certain duties, but when it comes to his own person and his belongings, he prefers to handle these matters himself, such as when he shaves himself or when he's tinkering with his father's watch. He seems to have a finicky and meticulous nature, trusting only himself to take care of his belongings in the way he thinks they should be. He altogether appears as a man who takes an immense amount of pride in his appearance and the image he wishes to project onto other people. And his appearance is that of the perfect military officer, crafted and cared for to perfection, an image of power, order, and ultimately fear. This persona Vidal maintains serves well to not only keep up his image, but to hide the monster he is inside from the outside world as well. Here I'd like to mention the song that Vidal listens to when he shaves. I had always assumed the song was some sort of party or military song, as I'm sure many of you did as well. But the song he listens to is in fact called, I'm a Poor Convict. Upon researching this song, I came across this post on Reddit explaining that the song is about a man who remains idealistic about his release from prison by singing, and it can be taken as Vidal listening to this song as a nod to his thoughts that the opponents of the regime are similarly without hope and doomed to fail. While there isn't any concrete evidence to support the claims they make in this post, they make some good points about its merits in the comments, and I think it's likely a nod from Del Toro towards this notion. Thank you to Invictusology for bringing this to my attention. I'll leave a link to their post down in the description if you'd like to read further into it. Now let's move on to take a look at the captain's capabilities. As far as his military prowess is concerned, he seems to be a shrewd and efficient commander. In a scene where he's poring over a map with his officers, and making a plan to draw his enemies to him by hiding all the area's supplies in their mill, he takes care to plan out the establishment of new command posts and a strict rationing program for the surrounding populace to abide by in order to put a stranglehold on his enemies' movements and supply lines, ensuring that if it isn't his company's bullets that put an end to them, hunger and disease will. He's not an impulsive commander, but he doesn't hesitate either. When one of his men spies a wisp of smoke on the horizon, he immediately mobilizes his force to apprehend his enemy, where some commanders may have sent a small group to scout out the situation, Vidal seems to be a man who takes no chances and jumps on any opportunity to suppress his enemy with impunity. He's intelligent and capable enough, and though I'm sure his family name helped him rise within the ranks of the Spanish army, it's likely he earned his position through hard work and his natural talent for leadership. He's not a man to be taken lightly, and a shrewd man in his position is one who has seen few failures. Though Mercedes and Dr. Fiorello managed to elude him for some time, and his life is forfeit at the end of the film due to his own mistakes. Overall, Vidal appears to be a natural leader and a cunning, cautious commander. At last, let's get into the different traits of Vidal we see in the film that make him such an effective and terrifying villain, starting with his emotions, or lack thereof, and his personality. In the first scene we encounter Vidal, when greeting his wife, he shows only a modicum of affection, which is more so directed towards the child she carries rather than the woman herself. In greeting his stepdaughter, he shows no affection towards her whatsoever. Rather, he stiffly rebuffs her handshake as improper and holds her fingers tightly in his hand before walking away without another word. From this first encounter, we immediately get the sense that the captain is strict in adhering to formalities beyond what is normal and is an overly macho man who leaves any emotion he may have locked deep inside him. We see both of these traits often throughout the film, but another notable instance is when his wife is telling the story of how they met at the dinner table to their guests and the captain shoots his hand away from hers apologizing to the guests for his wife thinking they'd be interested in her silly stories. There's no way of telling what the captain may be like in his private life, but publicly, he goes above and beyond to appear to the outside world that he is nothing more than the perfect soldier and an all-too-perfect and prude gentleman. Not even gunfire can phase the unbreakable wall Vidal has erected around his psyche, as we see him calmly walking into battle, not faltering in the slightest as men around him die and bullets pass by his head. Even at his end, when he's defeated and death is before him, 
He only shows a flicker of surprise as Mercedes tells him that his son won't ever know who he was. He's overly macho, a man's man in the worst way, and with his bravado and machismo come a fearlessness and pride that causes him to power through pain and emotion. He's even able to fight through the pain of alcohol seeping into his wounded cheek, taking another swig from the bottle even as he fights through the pain of the initial drink. But I've saved the most harrowing example of the captain's lack of emotion for last. In the scene where his company discovers two farmers hunting near their encampment, the captain ruthlessly murders them by first decimating the younger farmer's face with a bottle, before shooting the elder and the younger, respectively. Obviously, we're drawn to the utter brutality of the captain's assault on the younger man in this scene, but more disturbing than the act itself is that even here, the captain doesn't show any inkling of what you may call quote-unquote normal emotion for a human to show in a situation like this. Not a muscle moves on his face as he's committing these murders. And once he's finished and learns that the farmers were in fact hunting rabbits as they said they were, rather than showing remorse or guilt for his actions, he simply looks annoyed and tells his officer to search people properly before he bothers him next time. From these scenes, we can establish that Vidal is a void of emotion beyond understanding, an anomaly that leaves us viewers questioning how a person could be so cold in nearly every aspect of their life. The only time we see even a hint of joy on the captain's face is when he's toying with people, namely when he's pointing his gun at a dying rebel who keeps batting it away, when he tortures the stuttering rebel, and when he's about to torture Mercedes, showing that the captain is most definitely a psychological sadist. The captain isn't a sadist who takes pleasure in causing physical pain, but rather takes his joy in instilling terror into his victims and watching them struggle before he gives them their end. Though he's mostly devoid of any joy in his life, I'd like to note that he isn't a man without his vices. As he eats and drinks well, smokes, and we even get a hint that he may be a womanizer when he tenderly holds Mercedes' arm after he berates her for burning his coffee, adding yet another negative aspect to his character. He's extremely blunt with his speech as well, not bothering to offer any sort of warmth to his tone or the way he speaks preferring to command his men and servants without any tact, and acting similarly with his wife, and especially his stepdaughter, who he seems to despise more than anything. His preferred modes of interaction with his family are chastisement and scorn, rather than affection and warmth. With that in mind, let's take a look at how Vidal views the people around him. For his enemies, he seems to hold no respect or regard for them whatsoever, constantly referring to them by pejoratives when speaking of them showing us that this man doesn't even bother to consider his enemies as anything but enemies. In the dinner party scene, he expresses to his guests that he wishes for his son to be born in a new Spain, cleansed of the disease that is the rebels fighting against the new government of Franco. I believe it would be fair to say from this assessment that Vidal perhaps views the rebels as nothing more than vermin, and I doubt he would show any mercy to these men, undoubtedly preferring their deaths over a chance at possibly redeeming them by converting them to his cause. His overall view of people in general is likely little, as he seems to view those around him as tools to be used to further his own ends. A man who can't find it in himself to express his own emotions can hardly be a man who's capable of empathizing with others. He's seen talking to a number of people, and even participating in a dinner party of sorts, but all of this seems to be out of necessity rather than anything else. None of his encounters hinting to us that he has any joy in interacting with other people, or that he has any sense of camaraderie with his men a man so thoroughly obsessed with himself that he has no time to consider anybody else around him. So what do all of these things make Captain Vidal? He's a macho narcissist who has a severe lack of emotional sensitivity and an absence of personality beyond his ambitions and vision. He's a man who's so utterly sure of himself that he's even willing to assert that his child will undoubtedly be a male. While you could argue that he may be looking out for the populace of Spain in the sense that what he's doing will make all of Spain a better place in his mind, I believe he's more so in his position to not only live up to the legacy of his father, but to create the perfect world he has envisioned for himself and his son to live in. All of this coming from a place of selfishness, rather than a desire to do good, leaving him with little to no redeeming qualities that penetrate his overt narcissism. He's a man modeled after his leader and his party, a man who has taken up its message so fervently that he has become a living model for its ideals. He embodies the authoritarian trend and mentality that has plagued the world for thousands of years, and is a representation of the worst excesses of these regimes and what they have done to millions of people. Brutal, emotionless, selfish, fearless, and ruthless, Vidal is an abhorrent person, who in the end is given the scars to show who he is on the inside, and fittingly loses everything in one fell swoop. His distinct lack of humanity and strict adherence to a repressive ideology is something that leaves us viewers rooting for his downfall and his ultimate demise. And he's a man who's certainly deserving 
of being labeled evil. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Analyzing Evil, and I hope you enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Captain Vidal? Feel free to let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video and want to see more videos like it appearing in your feed, click the subscribe button to ensure you get access to each new episode when they go live. A big thank you to everyone who's already subscribed, as it's one of the best ways you can support the channel. If you'd like to support the channel even further, you can do so by heading over to Patreon and becoming a patron. You can find a link to Patreon on screen now, as well as a video explaining my motivation behind creating this Patreon, or you can find links to both down in the description. Thank you to everyone who's signed up so far, and a most vile thank you to those whose names you're seeing on screen now. Feel free to join the channel's Discord server as well, where I'll be hosting different events for the community as time goes on. We just recently started a book club, and are currently reading through A Clockwork Orange in anticipation of the next episode. We have a lot of fun there, and it's one of the best ways to communicate with both myself and the community. You can also follow me on the social media platforms listed in the description for occasional updates on the channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you soon.